hello it's heather i want to welcome you to my channel today we're going to be doing 12 different fun home decor ideas and i hope you find some inspiration today first we're going to start with some nautical rope and a plastic circular tray from both from dollar tree and we're going to make this into a neat tray and it's perfect to display on a coffee table or on a side table. We're gonna start by putting down both super glue and hot glue so that we can temporarily hold it until the super glue works. So we're going to start by just putting a little down, bending the first part of there's the first part of the rope that you put down you're going to bend into a little circle and then start circling around and you're just going to keep going putting some super glue hot glue and then attaching the nautical rope and this did take me quite a while to do i think it was about an hour and then I also used a lot of glue. So you're gonna wanna have quite a bit of glue on hand. I ended up using some E6000 and also some Maylene's Tacky Glue at the end because I ran out. <laughs> but they all seem to work fine. So any of those would work. And once you get it done, it's very substantial and it, it's very well put together. So it should hold up for a long time. I used about four packages of the nautical rope you can see here where i switched to the aileen's tacky glue and i'm just going around and every time i get out towards the edge i'll just want to make sure i get a nice finish and here's what it looks like i added some handles and it's perfect for a tray or as a backdrop in a corner, such as I have here. I hope you like it. Our second DIY today is going to be this cute little jean pocket holder for some florals. So we're gonna start with a palette of sorts to put the pocket on. I'm using nine of the paint stir sticks and I'm gonna put them all with the handle down. And then I'm just cutting some support pieces and I'm just gonna glue those down, make sure they get on the back side so they're covering all of the individual pieces of wood. After that, I'm gonna give it a rough coat of some paint and this is basically just going to be a distress coat, so it doesn't have to be perfect, unless, of course, you want yours to be. And then over the handle part, I'm putting some burlap ribbon, just to kind of give it a nicer finished edge. And I'm just kind of seeing here where I want the pocket to be. I cut the pocket right out of the old jeans, and I'm leaving the back side attached so it will be two layers i'm just putting it down with some maylene's glue and then i'm going to set that aside and take some baker's twine and some small beads you can use bigger ones if you need them or you have them on hand but i'm going to just use some small ones and i'm just going to make it long enough to make a hanger for the piece so I'm just putting them on and then tying knots at the ends and then I'll just attach it to the back I just use a little super glue for that and then we can go ahead and start doing the fun part We'll get some florals in the pocket. And I just love this idea because it can be for any time of year. You can change out the florals. 
and right now I've got some sunflowers I put in there and some other Dollar Tree florals. I got a little greenery for the back row. And this is how this project turned out. Such cute details on it and lots of fun. Goes perfect in my cottage style home. Next, we have our third DIY. We're going to make some cute farmhouse magnets. So I'm starting with one of the calendars and I'm, these are from Dollar Tree and I'm using the preview pictures that are on the very last page. And they just make these cute little squares and so I'm taking three of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and I'm gluing them together with some super glue and some hot glue. Just want to make sure they're sealed on there nice and tight. And I chose to do four. I picked four that kind of all looked good together. And I'm going to cut them out make sure they fit on each of the three each of the three pieces of wood so we're basically just going to mod podge them on here i'm putting a little bit of glue it doesn't take much and then i stick it on there and then after that is dry i do put on a second coat of mod podge on the top and now I'm going to flip them over and glue some magnets on the back. I did use some hot glue as well as they already had a sticky back to them as also. And here's how they turned out. They're so cute and they're heavy duty ones. They can hold quite a bit of things on them if you need them to be on a filing cabinet or on a refrigerator just something different. And we are up to number four. And this one is going to be a cute little candle plate or a candle stand it's not going to be very tall but it's going to be able to have a neat candle set on top of it and it's just a little bit of a riser I guess we're going to start by taking these circular beads I've got four larger ones that'll be the feet on it and then I have I think I did about 35 of these small brown ones and I just put a little wood stain in a baggie and put them all in and got them dyed and then took them out and blotted them off and I also did two of these square wooden pieces you can get them at Dollar Tree but I also was able to just order some on Amazon and then I'm just going to kind of lay it out ahead of time so you know what you're going to need. And then I just go down each side, putting the beads down and making sure they come out even to the sides. And I did use hot glue. It did pretty well with the wood as long as I held it down tight. So if you feel more comfortable using... Uh, super glue or E6000, then that would work as well.
So I'm just gonna keep going around till I get them all on. And then I'm gonna attach the top piece. So I just put some more hot glue on and keep that. I think I went ahead, yeah, I went ahead and added some super glue to the top and the bottom. So now we're gonna attach the little feet. And here's how it came out. Just a fun little way to give the candle a little extra pizzazz. And our fifth DIY is going to be making this wood slice wreath. And we're going to start with six of the wood slice wreaths, wood slices on the bottom. And then we are going to put six on the top staggered. You can see how I have the pattern here. And you can use any size of the wood slices as you'd like. I would, I think these are probably about four or five inches maybe. They're kind of bigger. And these do not have a hole in them. I know some do for ornaments and things, but these did not. Then I'm gonna take some of these pretty sunflowers again and I'm gonna tuck those in around the wood slices. And I took some Dollar Tree florals that I'm going to add down at the bottom. I took some of the wheat ones and I just like the yellow pieces in them and then the greenery and then the little tan wheat heads that are on there. And I took two packs of them and just kept sticking them in. You're gonna wanna make sure that the glue and the ends get hidden under that bottom sunflower. It's a nice simple look, nice and natural look for fall. But you could use it any time. And you could also put different florals if you want for other times of the year. Now I'm just going to make a hanger with some jute twine. And here's how it came out. I want to take a minute if you like what you're seeing and you'd like to see more ideas, please consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss out on anything and We'd love to have you here as part of our community. It's been fun getting to know all of my subscribers and I enjoy sharing ideas with you. DIY number six. We are going to be making a nice little sign that says gather. And I already had this board painted. It was a black background and I painted it with a, a Waverly chalk bank paint called Agave. And I did leave it very dry brush on the top layer of the teal. And I had this old sign. I got it at Dollar General, I believe, and it said gather on it. And it just was kind of boring, honestly. And the letters were starting to come off, so I thought I'm just gonna make something different with them. So I just popped all the letters off and I'll use the frame for something else. And I'm just hot gluing them on. This is gonna be very simple and easy. I'm gonna add a little flower with some greenery on the ends, trying out a few different ideas. And then I'm just gonna start gluing them down. 
I used some of the blue green leaves that are at Dollar Tree and this tan floral was also from Dollar Tree. I decided to add another leaf up at the top. And here's how that came out. Our seventh DIY is going to be taking this popcorn tin and making it into a milk can. So we got this when we were driving home one day and a man was getting rid of a bunch of things he had set out by the side of the road. And so this was free. We first painted it with silver spray paint. And then I'm going over it now with some cream paint. I'm doing just a real distressed looking layer. And then I'm going to let it dry to where it's dry to the touch, but I'm not going to let it cure very long because I want mine to be distressed. But if you want, you can let yours sit overnight before you put any lettering on it. You can either free paint or use a Cricut like I did or stickers. And I'm just putting this on transfer tape so I can attach it to the tin. Now you can see where some of the paint peeled off, which is what I wanted it to do. So I'm just gonna go, kind of go around now and take a little gray paint to kind of make it look a little more distressed. And here's how it came out. It's a cute little farmhouse style tin and it got a second life. Here's the before. And here's the after. The eighth do-it-yourself is going to be a cute, shabby, chic um, tiered tray. And we're going to start with two trays from Dollar Tree. I got two different rectangular ones. This one on the bottom. And then the one on the top is going to have a little bit more of an edge on it and a little bit smaller. Then I'm going to take these two candlesticks from Dollar Tree. And I'm just using E6000 and also hot glue to line up the trays and get them sitting one on top of another. Stay tuned and I'll show you how I styled these later in this video. DIY number nine is going to be this cute little home sign that's perfect for a farmhouse look. I started with this piece of wood that Michael cut for me and I'm just giving it two coats of agave Waverly chalk paint. I'm gonna paint all the sides and after the two coats get dry I'm going to take these HOME and print it out on the Cricut. I'm putting it on some transfer tape and attaching it. Then I'm going to wrap some twine around the top. So I'm just cutting off what I need, gluing it in the back and wrapping it. 
I decided to put in a little nail with a bigger head on it that could be like a chimney stack. And here's how it turned out. Super cute and easy. DIY number 10 is going to be showing you how I displayed things on my tiered tray. Now this is how I have it for fall. So I have lots of pumpkins and some florals from Dollar Tree. Some of the pumpkins are from Target Dollar Spot. I printed out the little picture in the frame and I had that gold owl was given to me by either my sister or my daughter that needed to find a new home for it. I'm just really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks very classy and beautiful in my country farmhouse. And we've got two more left for this video. Number 11 is going to be a cute farmhouse sign. I'm going to take this sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the truck and the arrow pieces from it so that we can use those in a different craft. They pop off pretty easily. And it's gonna leave us with these two stakes. I'm going to take them, I'm going to cut off the pointed ends and I'm going to make it where they are the same length as this calendar image with a little bit extended on either side. So then I found a calendar image that I liked from one of the Dollar Tree calendars and I'm just gluing it to a piece of cardstock and making it a little bit thicker so it hangs nicely. And then I'm just trimming it down to fit. And then I'm leaving it overhanging a little bit on the top and bottom because that will give these top and bottom wood pieces something to hold on to. So I'm taking my glue gun and I'm just gonna glue it on. I got it on a little crooked the first time so I had to pop it off. One of the good things about using <laughs> the glue gun, you can usually pop things off pretty quick right away. So I'm trying that again. I did not paint these because they were already this brown color and that's the color I would have painted them anyway. So I just left them and made this be a simple little craft. And after I get both those pieces on, I'm going to take some jute twine and I'm just gonna make a hanger for the back. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer than most. And I'm gluing that on with hot glue. And then I'm also going to take this little bow that I made that hangs in the middle. And that's how it came out. I've got it hanging in my front entry. Our final DIY is going to be two picture frames. These are made from the regular size Jenga blocks. And I'm gonna start with um, staining all of them, or you can paint them or leave them natural, whatever you want the look to be. And then I'm just gluing them together like so. I'm using eight blocks for each picture frame. And I ended up just using my hot glue gun. Um, if you want it to be a little stronger, then you should probably use some wood glue in addition to using the hot glue. I really was holding mine down well, and they, 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 you know, stayed together really well once I got them done. 
Then I printed out a couple of images from the graphic, from the Creative Fabrica graphic site. And I can link to that in the comments. I just found two that I wanted and printed them out to the right size and I'm just gluing them on the back. I did print them off on a cardstock so that it'd be a little heavier of a paper. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but my dog is snoring in the background. <laughs> Uh, that's so funny. Now, after I got this done, I found this cute ribbon that matches, and I'm going to make a little hanger from it. So I'm measuring the size that I want for each, and then I'm just using my hot glue gun and gluing it on the back side. I'm really happy with how these turned out. This happens to be a kind of fallish image because that's what time of year it is, but I'm hoping I can switch these out with some of the seasons. And that's how they turned out. I hope you enjoyed the videos today. I did this compilation to give you some ideas for your home, and I hope that you found some inspiration. I appreciate you watching, and until next time, bye-bye. We'll see you later.